Welcome. Welcome back. My God, it's been literally so long a year almost almost a full year since all four mm-hmm. of us have seen the screens again together but what are we doing today or wait no shoot who did the last intro i think i did don't make me do it again please <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everyone. Welcome back to our podcast. We are your three favorite book besties. My name is Carlos. My name is Lauren. And I'm Rose. And we have a very special guest with us. Again, we have Carrie from Carrie Can Read. Hello. We are going to be doing a book awards ceremony for 2024. Um the rules were kind of vague, so well, <laughs> meaning there were none. I was gonna say, was someone given rules? I was not given. Rules. I was not. No <laughs> rules or guidelines. I feel like we should go one by one, so it's yeah. not one person just like listing off things. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So we can kind of bop around. Yeah, so it's kind of like the Goodreads Choice Awards, but just not <laughs> yeah. control your shelf edition yeah, yeah control your shelf edition <laughs> sprinkle in a little more chaos and you've got it i think you should go first or carrie you're our guest maybe you should go first well i actually i do have one that i thought of you rose when i <gasps> created this category <laughs> i'm so scared because the last time i was on this podcast we were discussing <laughs> Zodiac Academy. Yes. And my first award I would like to give is the book that was, hey, at least it's better than Zodiac Academy. <laughs> <laughs> and that is Metal Slinger. This is a Kindle Unlimited book talk sensation. Okay. The bar is in hell. <laughs> <laughs> This is like the worst book I read all year and it's fresh. So I'm really angry about it. But you know what? I can safely say it was better than the Zodiac Academy. So Okay, fair. For you. (laughs) You might like it, Rose. I'd give it a try. (laughs) Literally, and before we decided to do a book awards episode, Carrie wanted all of us to read this fucking book. And obviously, we were all going to probably hate it, minus maybe Rose. And Carrie's full reasoning reasoning was, I just want to see Rose's reaction to this. (laughs) Which I was like, yep, fair. That's fair. Okay, now I kind of want to read this, though. You should. I mean, what sold me, I was reading it for a review. Mm -hmm. And I was going to put it down. I was like, I cannot. This is trash. But someone messaged me and said, the last two chapters are going to make you want to bang your head against a wall. And the whole thing with this book is that there's a twist that Uh you will not see coming because it does (laughs) not logically make sense. (laughs) Like it just does not make sense. Um, So I I finished it and I'm changed. Not in a good way. Not Not in a good good way. way. But you know what? Honest to God, it would be a great episode. For controlling yourself. So, oh my gosh. Saying. Saying. So, maybe we have to, guys. We mm-hmm. love a bad book. We <laughs> love a bad book. So, yeah, that's my, that's my first award for you. My anti awards. Okay, I'll go next. This is my good grief Charlie Brown Award. Because, <laughs> 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 you know, Charlie Brown always says good grief. And this book was literally good grief. It is House of Frank by Kay Sinclair, okay? Um, I'm giving it the good grief award because it was literally about how a girl goes through the grieving process. Okay, that's good. The book was so good. So I'm giving it the good grief award. I think I gave it a five star on Goodreads. Wow. So what's it? House of Frank? Yeah, House of Frank. It's got like a Ooh. little bit of fantasy, like magic um, inside of it as well. It is. Uh, I was able to get the the arc from NetGalley and I went into it just not even really knowing anything about like what it was. And I was like, oh, okay okay Mm. this is kind of really good so yeah and it's um like a b-plot romance like so she's like grieving 
maybe opening herself up to love. Very good. You love a kiss. I do love a kiss. <laughs> my God. In every book. <laughs> in, in every, every book. book. <laughs> no matter the genre. So that's my Charlie Brown good grief award. <laughs> So I've got to start off with a banger with a, a, a Brandon Sanderson book. Of course. Um, it is receiving the No Shot Award. <laughs> <laughs> it's the book that made me say No Shot the most while reading it. Um, and that's going to be Words of Radiance by Brandon Sanderson. It's the sequel. It's the second book in the Stormlight Archive. Um, so it had like such good plot twists and fight scenes and... I just kept saying no shot as I was reading it. The classic so Carlos no quote. Shot mm -hmm. Yeah. That's the one. That's very you. Very on brand. I love it. Yeah. It's me. Okay. This goes to the most delicious cover award. Okay. Ooh. The, and I brought the book out. The eyes Ew. are the best part mm. by Monica Kim. <laughs> Yummy. <laughs> Yummy. <laughs> What the hell? About a woman serial killer who is obsessed with eating specifically blue eyes. Oh. Mm -hmm. Does the color have like a, <laughs> <Carrie>. a meaning? <laughs> well, she so she's a Korean American and her dad just leaves the family and their mom starts dating this like awful white man who fetishizes Asian women. Okay. And so she, they were like eating fish eyes, right? And so she sees his blue eyes and she just hates him so much that she becomes obsessed with these eyes and she wants to eat them. Mm. Huh. <laughs> it's really great. You guys should read this. It sounds good. It sounds like a rose book. Yeah. <laughs> it's so good, guys. It's so good. Uh, gore, hating men, rose book. Yes. <laughs> Coming back around, I have a positive one. I have a good one. Um, this award goes to the smallest but mightiest book that I read this year. Technically, I read this like the last day of last year, but I'm gonna. It counts. It counts. It counts. It counts. It counts. Um, and I don't. I can't shut up about it. It is a 35-page book called Six Deaths of the Saint. Have you read this? No, by, I've never heard of it. Oh my! Oh my God! It's by Alice <laughs> E. Harrow, who wrote um, oh. like the Starling House, yes, Ten Thousand Doors of January, yes. Um, and so Kindle was doing; they're doing this whole series of like short stories and novellas with beloved authors, and so this was part of that series of like kind of gothic or fantasy esque books, and they had like. Alexi e. Harrow, Tamsin Muir, for example, um, and Six Deaths of a Saint in 35 pages had like epic romance. Oh. Like it was, it was stunning to the point where um, the author is actually going to be writing a full length novel mm -hmm. because people wow. loved it so much. Like, why was I crying? And so attached <laughs> to characters in like 30 pages gorgeous dang Six of the that saint. takes talent yeah that's crazy stunning work i almost don't want the full-length novel because i'm like it was perfection in as it was 35 pages mm. gorgeous gorgeous add to want to read small but mighty all right we we're gonna take a u-turn um <laughs> oh god oh no i have You're given right. this award what the plot award um to i got abducted by aliens and now i'm trapped <laughs> in a rom-com by kimberly lemming okay oh this one, kimberly, yeah because this one was just it was simply crazy it, like the plot <laughs> <laughs> i really i'm not at a loss for words often like i can't shut the fuck up but this book <laughs> had me literally just like what is going on like it was <laughs> it wasn't a bad book but it wasn't like a good book i don't th i don't know this book just really confused me so i'm giving it the what the plot award because like what the plot 
There were like <laughs> T-Rexes. It was like a why choose between aliens and she just like banged them both but in this weird like T-Rex world and she was like a zoologist. You guys, I don't know what this plot was. <laughs> <laughs> It sounds like a book you would read about. <laughs> very, very. Yeah. Yeah. This was another one that I'd gotten the arc for because I requested it. And <laughs> you wanted to read this book. I did. Yeah. I did want to read it. And yeah, it like it was not at all was that what I was expecting. Have you read her other one? Have you read like I accidentally saved a demon? Or whatever her other books that I got drunk and saved a demon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I read that. I one. feel like I feel like that's her thing because I was reading it and I think I spaced out and all of a sudden there were pirates. <laughs> yeah, and I'm just. Yes. I think that's her thing. She's like T Rex, pirates. Her. At least that one kind of kept to like a world. Its own world. Yeah. In this one, they're literally taken to this other world that I can only describe as like everything but the kitchen sink. Like if you just wanted to make the most insane fantasy alien planet and you just like dump a bunch of shit onto it, almost like a bunch of movie sets combined. You know what I mean? Like it was Ooh. just, it was just weird. I'm kind of interested. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> She's still a bookseller. <laughs> Okay, my turn. So sticking, stick, sticking with the plot theme, my next award is the Mid-Ass Plot Award. <laughs> <Aww>. <laughs> because I was going through the books I read this year, and I saw what I wrote for the review for that one, and I literally just wrote Mid-Ass Plot and So Predictable. So that award goes to Spark of the Everflame. I knew it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I know it's like a book talk favorite but i feel like it was just so mid like it was just like whatever and then the ending i don't know it just wasn't satisfying so it gets the mid-ass plot award from me okay um the award for the i need a lobotomy after reading this is <laughs> <laughs> sorry i looked up and saw you guys just facing <laughs> Is this, wait, can we say, like, lobotomy in a positive way or, like, a ugh way? Oh, no, like, ugh, like, I wish this was wiped from my memory. Oh, uh, okay, okay. Okay. <laughs> um, It is the Mindfuck series by M.T. <laughs> Abby. And, guys, I feel like people are going to come for me. Listen, people love this series a lot. Like, they love this series. And I thought maybe I would also like it because it is a woman serial killer and she's literally just killing men and chopping off their peepees. And I thought, <laughs> that, wow, this would be so great. No, this is so oh, bad. God. The only thing it had going for it was that it was fast paced and all the books are like 175 pages. Oh, Guys, the dialogue is the worst. And I, I'll read a bad book. I will read a we book. Know. With, we know. Listen, Zodiac Academy apologist here, okay? I'm so sorry. But this was just, it was so bad because it was just trying to be so deep and it wasn't. And it felt like it was campy, but campy on accident. And I was like, oh, yeah, it was not good. So what was the award again? Um, I need a lobotomy after reading this. Right. How could I forget that? <laughs> I got a lobotomy mid <laughs> mid explanation. You also want to forget this book. Well done, well done. Okay, my <laughs> moving on. Um, <clears throat> I'm giving a medal of honor. This is my medal of honor one for distracting me during the U.S. election because uh. it was daytime here in Asia. Um, that goes to the Blighted Stars you heard it's a sci-fi dystopia really good and as the like election results were rolling in i just kept reading this like well at least we're not being you know taken over by mold aliens <laughs> that eat your brain you know yeah so that's what we have going for us yeah could, could be worse could be worse yeah but also we kind of are 
(laughs) (laughs) So yeah, it was like a great dystopia, almost kind of nostalgic to like the the dystopian books I grew up with. Um, And it was great. And it was fully sucked me into another world so that I could leave ours temporarily which was really great on that day yeah. in particular. <laughs> yeah. It was yeah. it was needed that day. Yeah. But yeah, The Blighted Stars, highly recommend. Okay. All yeah. right. I'm in, I'm in my sci-fi era, as you'll see with my other recommendations, my other awards. This was the year of sci-fi for me, and I am happy to be here. <laughs> yeah, we love that. We I love it for you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this one is the Hello Brother Award. Some might know that from Vampire Diaries. Um, Uh. So my Hello Brother Award is going to The Rose Bargain by Sasha Payton Smith. Oh. Um, Yes. We actually had her on as a guest a couple episodes ago. I don't know. But Mm -hmm. um, she was talking about her book. I was lucky enough to get. Wow. I'm just like Arc Girl. I got another Yeah, I'm like, I didn't even know it was out already. (laughs) Bragging. (laughs) Sorry. <laughs> I was lucky enough to get one. And wow. Wow, wow, wow. I love, I love when brothers are fighting over the same girl. It is the best thing. They're not really like, <laughs> they're not like full on fighting over her. But it's more like she's mm-hmm. mentally fighting with herself. Like, this is the brother I should go with. But like, this one's also just so intriguing. Very Vampire Diaries. Oh, mm. oh it was so good. So good. I gave it a five star. Oh, <gasps> phenomenal. Yeah. No, just so I literally read it in like a day. I just couldn't it put is, it down. It is sitting Dang. on my shelf looking at me right now. I have it. <gasps> read it. I, yeah. I also have the arc. Um, is it a series though? There's going to be another book. It's always that way. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's, all, that's all right. I'll still read it. I'll still read it. Oh. <sighs> It was so good. I literally pretty. It's a pretty book too. Yes, it was very like Bridgerton meets Ooh. Vampire Diaries, sort of a vibe. Oh. Like, oh, okay. I will love this book then. That was good. Okay, um, my next one is actually one that we covered on the podcast. Um, <gasps> I feel like I getting... know. What that is. <laughs> After you hear the award name, you're gonna know. I know. It's the. I what the fuck did I just read award? <laughs> <laughs> and it's a book that Lauren picked. <laughs> called Lauren, don't cry. The ones we're meant to find. Because holy shit, what the fuck was that book? No, literally. <laughs> That's a good award. If you guys watched our podcast, you'll know we were all confused reading this book. We had no idea what confused the fuck was going on. <laughs> yep. And it was my second time. It was Lauren's <laughs> second time, and she still didn't know what was happening. <laughs> Guys, that was past me. That was past me. Yeah. Okay. You grew. <laughs> you have grown. From I did. That. The ones we're meant to find. Okay. <laughs> and no one found it. <laughs> no one fucking found it. <laughs> who, who did we find? No one. Um, for my next award. <laughs> For the I Can't Believe I Really Gave This Book Five Stars Award. Oh, God. Lauren, Lauren, you'll know. Get in My Swamp by GM Ferry. <laughs> I am not surprised. Listen, listen. This, and it, I just can't ever not think about this book. <laughs> and the other one, get, <laughs> Stay in My Swamp. This is Carrie. Have you heard of these before? <laughs> I feel like I I have seen the covers. Yes, it is literally just a Shrek retelling, um, <laughs> but with a lot of smut. And you would think, uh, gross. <laughs> no. <laughs> is the Shrek character like hot? Yes. Yeah, yeah. He's hot okay, okay, okay. and green. I mean, he is still green. Gotta stay green. He's. But he's definitely like he doesn't his face doesn't <laughs> um anyways moving on that's yeah. my word. <laughs> no one judge me <laughs> you know I'm conducting this crazy train with you let's go how am I supposed to follow that up okay wait I need to I need to shuffle then <laughs> <laughs> well then we'll go from 
Shrek being hot to I have the worst love interest I have read this entire year. A man I wanted to jump into the book and strangle. Oh, I read this book for my Halloween romantic comedy marathon. <gasps> Um, it is bad luck charm. Oh, I it is supposed to be, yeah, it's like rated pretty well for a romance book. Um, it's supposed to be like a kind of frenemies to lovers situation where this girl is being haunted or like targeted by witches and her like once true love but now turned enemy is the cop that has to protect her. This man, <laughs> toxic, gaslighting, horrible. Like, the whole point of them breaking up and, like, not being friends is he said horrible, horrible things about her in a bar, and she overheard. And at the end, when you think, like, oh, now they're in love, now he's going to apologize, he's like, well, you weren't even supposed to hear it, so it doesn't <gasps> really count. <laughs> what? And that's supposed to be romantic? Yeah, he, she wasn't supposed to hear, so those words don't count. Mommy, how'd you meet Dad? Well, you know, I heard him call me a dumb cunt, and I just <laughs> love that. I was like... Actually. That's my man, my man. Yeah. Like, what? I could not believe. I could not believe. And, oh, no, I'm not going to go into it. I have a whole video on it, if you're curious. But this man... <laughs> I think his last name was Graves. His name is like Gavin or Garrett or oh, you know, that's the one problem. of those. Mm -hmm. And I was just like, really? Bad luck charm. Stay away on my shit list. <laughs> You're like, <laughs> I am heated again. <laughs> yeah. Bring me Shrek. <laughs> <laughs> All right. This one, <laughs> we're taking another U turn. This segue, oh. I don't know. I don't know how to do it. Um, Giddy up in my face award. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. And that is going to Lost and Lassoed by Lila Sage. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh... This I almost gave the Awakening Award, but I thought Giddy Up in My Face was better <laughs> for some reason. Um, because you know, I didn't think that a book series could take me by storm like Ice Planet Barbarians did. Like, I just didn't think that the comparison could ever be drawn. But here we are. The Rebel Blue Ranch series, you guys. It's my, like, I'm like, am I a cowgirl now? And like, howdy, howdy, y'all. What's <laughs> yeah. going on? What is going on? So, yes, the Giddy Up in My Face Award goes to Lost and Lasso. Wow, I'm actually shocked. Yeah, are the these are cowboys that we are interested in, right? It's not like I'm thinking Ice Planet Barbarians. I'm like, are there? It's not horses. <laughs> oh no, my gosh! And she is a horse girl, guys. She is a horse girl. <laughs> they're real men, okay? They're okay. they're actual cowboys, okay? No, this is not a fantasy world. I know this is just regular fiction. It's crazy. I know. Good to know. Okay, my next one. So I didn't I didn't read that many books this year. I only read 20, um, which is kind of sad. So I picked another one that was on the podcast. Um, it's I gave it the Dramatic Eye Roll Award because I was rolling my eyes all through the book. I mean, it was good, but it was just like, OK, it's uh, Blood Over Bright Haven. <gasps> oh, hot take, hot take, hot take. Let me hot explain take. why I gave it the Eye Roll Award. Okay. Because of all the misogyny and racism that oh. was in the book. So, you know, I was rolling my eyes while reading it because I was like, mm -hmm. really, you know. So, yeah, it received the Dramatic Eye Roll Award. I, yeah, I, I heard that award as you being like, ugh, like this book. And I was like, wait, yeah. what? <laughs> we were all <laughs> nervous. <laughs> <sighs> okay, well... I feel like this one is not as good, but for the I'm literally scared right now award. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It goes to Incidents Around the House by Josh Mallerman. Mm -hmm. Ooh. This book, guys, 
I am literally scared. I am actually still scared that the other mommy is in the room with me right now. I'm actually scared of her. Imagine <laughs> Coraline in real life. That's what I was thinking. It is so scary. And the way that other mommy is described, she's got like, she can grow as tall and she curves into the ceiling and she just stares over you. She has hair on the back of her arms and she is so scary. And she always asks this little eight-year-old girl, Bella, who's just innocent, can I go into your heart? Because she wants to possess her. So I'm literally scared right now. (laughs) (laughs) I've been wanting to read that, but I haven't got to it. Does Bella have like mommy issues? Is that why? Oh, major mommy issues. Mommy is cheating on daddy. So is it is the book like a metaphor for something else? It is because her parents are like they love her, but also they have a lot of issues. So I think it's Bella's way to cope with what's going on Mm. like her household Mm. not being so happy and then there is a secret that the parents reveal to bella in the end you're adopted (laughs) (laughs) but let me tell you the ending i thought i was gonna cry i thought i was i didn't cry surprisingly but i did think i was gonna cry not a happy ending wait i like not happy endings so i might read it yeah you'll, you'll love it um this is this is niche and kind of random, but I seem to love space lesbians. Lesbians <laughs> in space. Previously, I had had Gideon the Ninth, that whole series, as my fave. We love space sapphics. This year, a memory called Empire came in to save the day. Excellent. I've been book. wanting to read that for so long, and I haven't got read to it. it. The only thing is, though, like, the way that it's written, I felt like I needed to concentrate. Yeah, I heard. If my eyes strayed from the page, I would be lost. So it was, like, not an easy book to, and it's a duology, finished, not an easy book to fall into. But once you, like, get the rhythm of how they talk, so good. The romance is very, like, subdued. And I think, Lauren, I think we get one kiss for you okay um just like (laughs) she'll take it so good so funny written in like i felt like just my imagination expanded from reading it like what what you can do with language was amazing so yes my a new addition to my favorite space lesbians (gasps) a memory called empire Great. This is all I needed was more books added to my TBR for next year. Mm-hmm. And they're they're <laughs> thick. I mean, not Brando Sando level, but I think they're like 600 something. That's pretty big. Mm-hmm. Okay. This award is called the Nursery Room Paint Drying Award. Very uh-huh. specific. <laughs> Wait, say that again? I... <laughs> Excuse me? What did you call me? Yeah. <laughs> this is the... Listen now. The Nursery Room Paint Drying Award. Interesting. Okay. (laughs) Specifically the nursery. And you'll get why. And this award goes to Witchcraft for Wayward Girls by Grady Hendrix. And it is paint drying because this book was the most boring fucking book I have read this year. (gasps) That is so grady. Interesting. It was literally, I would have rather watched paint dry, to be honest. And (gasps) it is the paint in the nursery room because it is just a collection of pregnant women um, that are like kind of trying to dabble in witchcraft. But like even that makes the book sound too interesting for what it is. Like, (laughs) am It was so bad. I almost DNF'd it and I was like, come on, like this is Grady. Like I've gotta yeah. there's gotta be a a moment where I'm like, that's why I read this book. No. no never I'm came. Shocked. This book was so much just around pregnancy. Like this was the LaCroix of witchcraft books. Like literally when it happened, it wasn't even like exciting. Cause it was like, this is what we built it up for. Ooh. This? Mm-mm. Wow. I'm in shock. Oh. Sad, sad, sad. <sighs> Carlos? <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Speaking of sad, <laughs> uh, 
my next award is a don't do this to me right now award because it was the only book that made me cry this year um and it was it's not even supposed to be like a sad book but i cried at the end because it was like the final book in the series and it's calamity by brandon sanderson it's the third Mm. book in his steel heart series which is about it's kind of like the boys but like YA. Where it's like they're superheroes, but they're actually kind of evil, and they kind of like destroyed the world basically. Um, but the third one at the very end, it was just so it's it's not even sad. It's kind of like a happy sad, but it was the only book that made me cry. I remember I was driving home because I was listening to it on audio, and I literally just started bawling in my car <laughs> towards the end because I was like, "No, there's no way." Um, but yeah, it's the "Don't Do This to Me Right Now" award. Dang, how do I transition from the crying of <laughs> smut, smut, okay. smut, smut? It's actually not. It's This is negative, though. Um, oh. For the book that made me question whether or not I enjoyed reading anymore. <laughs> what? Oh my God. Guys, I hated this book so much. I didn't even know if I liked reading anymore after this. That's crazy. Luckily, for you to hate a book, that's crazy. I'm at the edge of my seat. Guys, listen, and people love this book. It's Never Lie by Frieda McFadden. Oh, really? I hated this book. This is the worst thriller I've ever read in my life. Ever in my life. I've heard people really like it. It's got a 4.1. Yeah, I'm kind of shook. For me, if I could give it zero stars, I would. (gasps) It was written so terribly. And again, I am not one to judge writing, Mm -hmm. typically ever, okay? It was just that bad. I wanted to gouge my eyes and my ears out. I hated this. It had the worst plot twists ever that made sense-ish, but didn't make sense. And then she kept piling more on just to shock the reader. Have you read other Frieda McFadden books, though? Only that one that we listened to. For the Utah trip, right? Yeah, which also wasn't good. <laughs> yeah, no. It, was, oh. it wasn't good. So I just might be a Freedom McFadden hater. Did she write, like, The Boyfriend? What's that one that I keep seeing? The Housemaid, okay. The Boyfriend. Yeah, uh-huh. yeah, yeah. I see her everywhere. Yeah, people love her books. Never lie. Not me. <laughs> Noted. Um, I'm gonna flip the switch. Um... <laughs> This is this is my last one. So the any other <gasps> category that I come up with will be coming up on the fly. Um, but this one is my I Believe in Love Again <gasps> recommendation. Aww. But specifically my love of fantasy. I feel like fantasy books have just like not been hitting for me. Um, but Air by Sabah Tahir <gasps> came out. I got the arc. Um She wrote Ember in the Ashes, which is like one of my favorite series. And Air is a continuation, basically, like many years later, but a lot of our same characters are in it. And just reading it, I was like, oh, this is what I want. Like, when when did fantasy writers stop writing like this? And why? Um, Loved it. Very cool world, very cool magic system, political intrigue, romance, all of that so good and now i have to wait a year for the next book in the series wait how many books is it gonna be i think it's gonna be another trilogy but ember was four so maybe show mm. i don't know i, I don't trust okay. authors when they say like duology and then they're like wait actually no three books yeah. so they're lying <laughs> yeah i don't mm. but yes air is like everything i want a fantasy book to be Give me more of them. That is beautiful. I love that award. Gorgeous. Gorgeous and hopeful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Let's see if I have an award to dash that hope. I know. (laughs) So this is my Polly Wanna Cracker Award. Lauren. (laughs) What the hell? What does that even mean? (laughs) Oh my God. It's a play on words because this is all about a polygamous relationship. Polly want a cracker. Oh, that was good. That was good. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much. And we've got 
we've got a duplicate author here. GM Fairy's coming back in the chat. She's coming back. <laughs> I know exactly what book this is. <laughs> this is called My AI by GM Fairy. Okay. And this is all basically this internet influencer on MeTube um, gets an AI. <laughs> gets a um robot security guard for safety purposes and she gets the company to send an appendage we'll say and she starts fucking the robot and there's a malfunction where or no not a malfunction he gets shot protecting her <laughs> Not actually not a malfunction. He gets shot. Okay. <laughs> One could say that's the ultimate malfunction. Okay. Um, <laughs> and so she sent another one, but then the other one gets fixed. So now she has two and she's like, whatever will I do? <laughs> and so she does them both. And then she leaves them alone and they start doing it. And she's like, this is great. We could just all do it together. So this gets the Polywana Cracker Award. <laughs> oh my god, these books you read are crazy. <laughs> okay. Um, yes, I just came up with this. <laughs> it's another one we had on the podcast. I'm telling you, all the books I read this year were literally just for the podcast. Um it gets the Stab Me With Your Love Award. I have an award for this book, too. <laughs> I have a feeling it's a bad award. <laughs> uh, yeah, from her, it's going to be bad. It's Butcher and Blackbird by... I don't remember the author. Um, Bryn Weaver. Oh, right. Bryn AKA Weaver. AKA the Orb Bryn Weaver. Weaver. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I really liked it. I mean, if you've seen our episode, you'll know. Um, and Rose hated it, which is crazy, because I feel like so it's literally wild. her type of book. I know. What award did you give it? I gave it, I'm suing for the trauma of that one spit scene award. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, the spit scene. I forgot that about that. was the worst thing I've ever read in my life. I take it back, Frida McFadden. Yours wasn't even the worst, this book. <laughs> and I, listen, I didn't hate this book. I did not hate it, but I did not love it or enjoy it as much as... One would think. It was wild. She should be in prison for writing that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, this one also just came up in my head trying. Um, this is the award of who kidnapped my favorite author. <gasps> oh, no. Because I had a highly anticipated book by an author I love and trust. That's such a good name for the award. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I swear to God, someone else wrote this book. It is The Courting of Bristol Keith <gasps> by no! Mary E. Pearson. Mary oh, yeah. Pearson. She wrote, like, Dance of Thieves. Um, oh, she also okay, wrote, like, okay. Kiss of Deception. So she's written YA. Good. Great. Gorgeous. Love her work. This is her first adult book. It <gasps> really felt like someone kidnapped her and used her name. Like, unedited. The romance was so bad. Like, she does yearning like no other. This one, the romance is off the page. And creepy. Oh. I would just like to, there were, like, creepy elements to it that were never, like, cleared up. Like, he, there's a little bit of time, not time travel, but, like, in the fae realm and the mortal realm, time moves differently. Mm -hmm. So she may or may not be in a romantic relationship with her dad's best friend. Oh. And I'm just like, <laughs> can, we like can we like pause and talk about how this is weird? Um, no, it was truly everything I love about her writing was gone. My biggest disappointment, I'm real salty about it. The Courting of Bristol Keats. And that has a beautiful cover. A lot of people are going to get it. And yeah. Me, I'm people bring mary back i don't know where she went where is mary <laughs> <laughs> bring her back. Is wild. yes my kidnapped author award okay this one i'm going to give the random ryan award um it's called the random ryan award because 
I had my husband randomly pick out a book for me to read and I was oh. very <laughs> I was very nervous because he picked a book like you know how when you ask someone like pick out a book for me and you kind of have an idea of what you already want to read and then they pick yeah. something totally offbeat mm-hmm. and you're like maybe I shouldn't have asked you um, <laughs> yeah. mm-hmm. it was that kind of a vibe but I was like no this has been on my TBR for like a bajillion years. Like, I'm just going to read it. I own it. I should read it. And I was pleasantly so surprised. And it is The Guinevere Deception by Kirsten White. Um, I had gotten this as like an Owl Crate book back in like probably 2018. Oh my and- God. <laughs> <laughs> Literal years. <laughs> but it was so good. It was very like King Arthur, Lancelot kind of vibes Ooh. with, yeah, very medieval YA and plot twisty and just so good um because she's not the real guinevere it was kind of like a she has to pose to be this this lady and yeah i loved it i gave it a four star way to go ryan okay this is gonna get the wait this is kind of good award because i never expected to like another book by this author but like this series is kind of good it's the (laughs) I can't believe I'm saying this. I can't believe I'm saying this. Oh, I know. Grown Up Glass by Sarah J. Bass. <laughs> I know. <laughs> That's crazy. Kind of good, guys. Like, it's kind of good. It's kind of good. I'm on the third book right now. Oh, okay. And uh, yeah, I'm enjoying oh. it. I'm enjoying it. I never thought I would enjoy another SJM book, but yeah, I like, I'm liking the series. Carlos is a. A Sarah Janet stan. No, don't oh. say that. Don't say that. <laughs> don't say that. <laughs> but yeah, Throwing Up Glass is good. Recommend. Crazy world that we're living in. <laughs> uh, Rose, any more? Um, yes. I guess I should have brought this up when Carlos brought it up. It was at the bottom of my list. I also gave an award to another podcast book. For the I Will Never Recover from the Grief of Never Being Able to Read This Book for the First Time Again. And it is Blood Over Bright Haven by Emma. Mm. Mm. Yeah, so good. It, just, it was really good. It's just so good. And I'm like, I could never read it for the first time again. I can never have mm-hmm. the exact same feeling, you know? Mm-hmm. I actually think about this book often. And, you know, I love to reread a book. But mm-hmm. I just, uh, just knowing how it ends, I'll be crying yep. the entire book. Have you guys read Sword of Kaigen? No, but I really want to. I'm like... 40% of the way through, I accidentally DNF'd it earlier this year. Oh. <laughs> On accident. <laughs> On accident. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm like keeping it because I like Blood Over Bright Haven was so good. And I'm like, and I heard sort of Kaigen is even better. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, I'm keeping that for a rainy day. It's also in my back pocket. I, my mind is blank. My mind is blank. <laughs> I'm passing. <laughs> I'm passing the award ceremony mic okay. to Lauren. Pull up <laughs> tapping one. out, tapping out. Okay, so this one, we're kind of going back to a negative space, okay? Um, I'm giving this one the Reader's Block Award um, for making me almost also quit reading for the foreseeable future. (laughs) And (laughs) it was one of my Kindle Unlimited picks, okay? Um, Okay? This one is The Guest with Claws by Ella Maven. The guest with claws. Oh no. Yeah, you should really look up the cover. Um the oh, wait, guest the guest with claws, he is sort of like a weird Frankenstein vampire guy. He just he's a vampire made up of like a bunch of oh. different skin, like from oh. beings that he's slaughtered. But what is what is the in the picture the girl is also kind of greenish gray is She's just a girl. No, just a girl. She's just a girl. Wait, who is this by Ella Maven? Mm-hmm. Have you yeah. seen her other series? No, Lauren. I need everyone. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. What is it? Oh my god! She has a series called The Drixonian Warrior. The first book is called The Aliens Ransom. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what else? Yes! <laughs> I'm yelling, ew. Ew, no! What is that called? 
the title? <laughs> Melting the Frost Troll. <laughs> Not the cheetah print fur coat. What is <laughs> Oh my god. Oh I'm my sorry. god. Yeah, her writing, you guys. Her writing was just I had to DNF it. I couldn't do it. I think I got maybe 50% of the way through and I just <laughs> Mine is, is a little sweeter than that. Okay. Um <laughs> not as extreme. Um, this award is for the book that makes me want to quit my job, move to a small town, and start a bookstore. I already told Lauren about this book. Yes. Um, it is Welcome to the Hyunam Dong Bookshop. That book, I just felt like I was sitting in my little beanbag, looking out the window, pretending it was raining because it doesn't rain here, drinking <laughs> a hot cup of coffee, reading this book, and it just made me feel so happy. But the tone of the book is a little melancholic, and oh, but you just feel like, I know these characters. I know these people. And it just, it makes you just want to start a bookstore. I loved it so much. And I think everyone needs to read this book. Oh, it's on my TBR. It is like at the top oh, of my TBR. It is so good. So good. I know it's going to wreck me. Yeah, it will. Can't wait. I think, didn't they write a second one? Is there a second one? Or maybe, you know when, like, all the Japanese cat books, the so, like, the cat that saved the world, the cat mm -hmm. that saved I think Korea is doing that, but with like cozy small businesses. So there's like Cute. the book, the bookshop, but I think there's like a laundromat. <gasps> I will die. I must. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Wait, what is it <laughs> yeah. called, Rose? Welcome to the Hyunam Dong Bookshop. It is so good. It is so good. I like the cover. It's cozy. Have you guys read Mickey Seven? No. Have you heard of Mickey Seven? No. Oh, I'm so excited. Um, <laughs> so Mickey Seven is a sci-fi, it's like, kind of reminds me of The Martian, but like a little darker. Like if Andy Ooh. Weir was a little less hopeful, um, but they're making it into a movie and it's directed by Bong Juno, who did Parasite, uh -huh. who is starring in it, Robert. Pattinson. Oh wait, With Mickey Seventeen. Yes, so they're calling it Mickey Seventeen. Basically, it's like this planet. They humans are trying to find other planets that we can live on, and they need to bring one person along to like experiment on. Like, is the air toxic? Is the mm -hmm. water toxic? So this guy just like dies a bunch of times, and they like bring him back to life, reprint him but he accidentally gets double printed. So there's two of him oh. walking around. And I'll just say that there is a point that reminds me an awful lot of what you described in my AI. We must. <laughs> we must. Damn it, I'm in. And if you then have the mental picture of Robert Pattinson with his really weird accent <laughs> as the main character, it just, it's, <laughs> it's, it's a ride. And it's short, too. I am there. I'm sat. Let's do this. Yes. So wow. I don't have a name for that award, but yeah. Beautiful. Most anticipated, we'll give it. Oh, true. <laughs> yes. Um, this one is getting the Dorothy Award because, boy, was I swept up in this plot twister. Oh, okay. Oh. <laughs> Okay, all right. <laughs> nice. <laughs> um, and it is going to The Brightness Between Us by Elliot Schreifer. I barely started it, but I'm liking it so far. Oh, it's so good. Um, the sequel to Darkness Outside Us and another podcast book that we did, but this oh, one is so good. Ooh. So, so, so good. Yeah. I truly believe that everybody should read The Darkness Outside Us. It's the first book. It is just perfect. It it's is crazy. Crazy. at the library crazy. right now. I would not change anything about that book. Mm -hmm. And yeah, the second one, I was a little nervous. Yeah. But it it did not disappoint. So yeah, this one gets the Dorothy Award. Just nice. got it from the San Diego County Library. And the best thing is to go into it blind for sure. Not knowing anything yeah, don't, about like, it. If you don't know anything about it. Okay. I just know it says two boys stranded in space. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> it 
That's all you need to know. That's all you need. <laughs> She's in her sci-fi era. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Our sci-fi gay era. Let's go. <laughs> I guess I, I'm looking through the books I've read. And I think, Carrie, you've read this book too. But I guess I can give one last word to the book that I – was actually pretty disappointed with, but at least it felt like Halloween Town. Pumpkin Spice and Poltergeist. Oh. <laughs> I just thought, you know, the romance would be a little better. And I don't typically read like contemporary romance, but this had like witches and werewolves and vampires. So it was a little different. But, and it was sapphic. So I was like, oh, I think I'll love this book. They literally knew each other for two days mm. and then something happened and then a week later they're in love again. And um, <laughs> mm-hmm. I just didn't really get invested in that. But nice part was there was a little murder mystery and I did like that. Yeah. Mm. But yeah, and it did feel like Halloween Town. So I really appreciated that. I feel like it that book was trying to tackle like some pretty heavy stuff. Like, yeah one of the main characters girlfriends had died tragically oh my God. and like mm-hmm. to deal with that it was such a short book yes mm-hmm. so it was like i i just don't know why they tried to do something that big and like not give us any time to handle any of that so i think it would have been really good if it was just like a hundred pages longer agree see if it was longer then i i also would have liked it that's why i'm like it was a yeah. little disappointing. Mm-hmm. But the vibes were good. The vibes were good. <laughs> the vibes were good. Okay. I have one last award. <gasps> Bring us home. Shocked and Swooned Award. And this one goes to Fall for Him by Andy Burke. Um, this was a enemies to lovers gay romance. Um, just so good. I I can't remember. I think this was another NetGalley one. Um, that I had just randomly requested, just liking the cover. And I gave this book, I'm pretty sure, five stars. It was so, yeah, it really just knocked me off my feet. Is it, is it like contemporary? Yes. Mm -hmm. I saw this on your Goodreads and I added it to my want to read because it looks Mm -hmm. good. The cover does look good. I do like the cover. What's it called? What's it called? Fall for Him by Andy Burke. Ending on a high note. That's nice. I know. I yeah. I didn't do it on purpose, but it worked out. It all worked out. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Would you say that this year was a good reading year or a bad reading year for you guys? Um what a loaded question. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like for me it's a like I, I just did all of my wrap up videos, so that's why I'm like it's on the brain. I feel like the year started off really strong. Mm. and then all of like especially the autumn releases that I was anticipating let me down so much that I I feel very negatively about 2024 but when I look at it I zoom out it was all right yeah okay it was a very like black and white year like I I Mm. had very strong feelings about the books I read this year either I loved it or I did not like it um there wasn't really a book that I was just kind of like mid opinion on mid ass plot. Yeah. No, (laughs) (laughs) no, no mid ass stories necessarily for me. It was either really good or really bad. So Mm. I don't know. I did get a lot of reading done this year though. I think last year I got 50 books this year was 70 and I'm like about to hit that. So nice. Yeah. I think for me it was the opposite. I read almost no books. I only read 20, but seven of them were Brandon Sanderson books and they were all really good. Mm. So I don't know. I guess it was like an okay year, but I wish I would have read more books for sure. I I think I had a really good reading year. I did read a lot of books that I hated, but also <laughs> I read a lot of books that I'm like are probably in my all time favorites now Mm -hmm. so i feel like those outweigh all the bad books you know what i mean yeah Mm -hmm. so i would say it was pretty successful all in all i think i have higher hopes for next year (laughs) (laughs) but i think i'm gonna read a lot of books to kind of 
use as escapism. So I'm hoping to blow this reading goal out the water next year. We're going for 100. Yes. Yep. You got this. 2024 coming to a close. Thank you all for wow. coming to our lovely book awards. I hope everyone's wearing their finest gown and jewelry. <laughs> what? Are you on a <laughs> That's what you I wear to my, the award my, ceremonies. My finest regalia oh. for this. <laughs> your finest, you're telling me you're not wearing your finest jewels right now? No. I don't <laughs> <laughs> Well, thank you, Carrie, for coming on this wild ride yet again. Yes, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> it's, never, it's never a boring time, we could say. <laughs> that is true. Yeah. Love being here. Oh, I'm well, leaving with a you. long list of books perfect and hopefully other people are going to join in on this little tbr as well or let us know if you've already read these and if we gave an award that y'all didn't like <laughs> <laughs> or if you want to put some fun awards that you created in the comments we would love to see this oh too. yeah that would, so that's fun they can be creative they can be very basic it's okay not everyone comes up with uh the nursery room paint drying <laughs> award <laughs> Polly wants a cracker. <laughs> <laughs> you can find me at Lauren H. Wrights on Instagram and read anything good on YouTube. You can find me on Instagram at Kingdom of Books and possibly on Twitch at Carlos Kings. I might be playing some. There's a new game coming out called Marvel Rivals. I don't know if anyone's heard of it, but I will be playing that game a lot. So I might be streaming Ooh. on there. Um, you can find me at Flower Reads a Lot on Instagram or YouTube. <laughs> you can <laughs> watch or listen to our podcast, Control Your Shelf, anywhere you get your podcasts. Um, watch our YouTube videos. We're really funny. And our special guest, where can everybody find you? Oop, I am Carrie Can Read on everything. Instagram, YouTube, etc. And she's on TikTok now. Ooh. Oh my oh. god. We try and we try and is she a book talker? I am not a short form girl. <laughs> <laughs> but we're trying new things. So we are also trying new things. Keep your little eyes peeled for some merch drops, y'all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Kinda crazy. Um yeah, we're gonna be doing some merch and <laughs> We're going to update y'all on that soon. Probably, actually, maybe before this comes out. So, yeah. Again, thank thank y'all for watching. And I hope you had a good 2024 reading year. And if not, fingers crossed for 2025. <laughs> <laughs> uh, bye. Is this, is this the outro that I